He paid for all of the sins, for all of the people, for all of time. You know, it doesn't take a double doctoral or a master's work. I'm not poking fun at anybody. Be who God created you to be, please. It always boils down to our relationship with Jesus. That, it, that relationship affects everything in our lives. God chose Israel. Our founding fathers chose God. Be a doer of the word. Because faith without works is dead, for real. That's religion, that's knowledge, that's intellect. You need to go out there and engage with your world and own your liberty. So I got good news and I got bad news. Wow, I have never seen everybody snap to attention like that, that fast, it was awesome. I'm probably gonna do that again. Pastor Craig worked his way all the way through my notes from beginning to almost the end. Now, was he in the flesh or was he in the spirits? The question. Yeah, for real. So we don't believe in coincidences, yeah? Yes. So this is really important from the Lord what Pastor Craig already shared and the bobbing and weaving through what he gave me to share, what we had during worship already. So if I could encourage you by not telling you what to do, but encouraging you strongly, or would Paul say, I beseech thee, don't miss the bullet points, especially in this hour. There's a lot going on in this hour not only in the natural, not only in our country, but across the globe, and more so in the spirit than you can imagine. Oh, there's a book on imagination that might help you with that. There's a book on hearing God's voice, which y'all need to do. I want to be super spiritual. Go ahead and tell me. Ah, oh, you're so super spirit. Go ahead, tell me. I want to be. The Bible's full of us. Come on in. The water's really good. A promise. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Okay, so. You had to go to the flesh flash thing too, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I'm just looking to see how many bullet points down that was, so I know where I'm at now. So, can we relate to flesh flashes? Baby, I'm sorry for my flesh flash. I don't want to not be in the spirit. And I had a flesh flash. I know, spoiler alert, right? No, of course not. Because I'm no different than everybody else. And now Chris is just going to comfort my bride because I had a flesh flash. <laughs> <laughs> I love my brother. Thank you. No, I, I am truly sorry. We're on a journey from glory to glory, yes? Is that permission to fall on your face? Oh, please, more. Is that permission to fall on your face? Of course not. That would be sloppy grace. Jesus spoke about that clearly. We don't want to be there. But guess what happens? We make mistakes. And we edify each other, and we exhort each other, and we lift each other up, and we walk this journey out from glory to glory, deeper in him all the time. I don't want to be who I was when I got up this morning. Praise Jesus, I don't want to be who I was when I got up last week on Tuesday. Amen. Okay, good. And how about that Trump victory? He's not our king. He's only our president. And... It's restoring hope to many. Yes. And if, because there's a lot of if in life, yeah? yeah? A lot of if in the word, too. Go on that rabbit trail someday. I think you'll be amazed. If half of what our newly elected president says he's going to do, alongside of the people that he's surrounded himself with, for the last 90 days, 
if half. Praise Jesus. We are going to set some people free. We're going to break some people out of bondage. We're going to have people walk in prosperity they knew not of. And then guess whose job it is to teach them about the real prosperity that Pastor Craig just taught about. So I won't go in my notes and all that. That. That's why I'm excited about going to Thanksgiving dinner with my brother and his bride and his two girls and his grandkids that are believers. Band still stuck in religion. And whoever else the other 20 or 18 are that are coming. I don't even know who it is. I don't care. But why? Because we already love them. Amen. And we're going to leak Jesus all over them. Yep. And then... Given the opportunity, we'll speak. Be in the spirit, not in the flesh. Yep. Be in the spirit, not in the flesh. <clears throat> okay. So I really feel, and I said feel because I mean feel. I feel, I sense, I have an inner knowing. I want to be clear because I'm not operated by emotion or feeling. Amen. Anybody, any of you that know me well know I'm really black and white. That's for a reason, because I refuse to be in feelings and emotion. Yet I'm telling you now, I feel in the spirit on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Yep. Y'all should too, your spirit being. Amen. You ought to be able to get out of your flesh and into the spirit. Okay, there is so much going on right now that I feel it's almost like a birthing. And I, I got no more than that. And, I, and, I, and, and as I sensed that, Allie dropped yesterday afternoon and said, you know, sometimes there's real uncomfortable, mm, sometimes it's uncomfortable before a shift. Isn't that the way you put it? Or before a change, something to that effect. Okay. And so it kind of edified, it kind of dove into what I was sensing. And then throughout the night and this morning, I, I, as I'm asking the Lord what that is and what that's about and what that means and because it's constant communication and I encourage you all to be in constant communication asking, probing, talking and then shutting up and listening, yeah? Okay. And there is a lot a new, a new, a new at play. Now, Put it in the for what it's worth department. I'm not going to pull it all apart. There's a lot going on. And so it is just so fun to be alive at a time like this and to be chosen to be here right now in this moment to do our Lord's bidding because it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about him. Yep. Did anybody hear about Tucker's encounter? Tucker Carlson, the news dude from Fox News? Y'all yeah. yeah. hear about his encounter with the demonic entities? Yeah. How he felt and ended up with scratches? Mm -hmm. Now, don't tell me there's no feelings in the spirit, because there is. The dude ended up with claw marks after he fought with a demon in his bed. And then he had an encounter with Jesus. Amen. Now, guess when that was? I like to pay attention to, because bullet points. I, I, you hear me say I put it in my back pocket, right? So about a year and a half ago, this dude start, couldn't stop speaking what he was sensing and feeling, and it got him canned from Fox. Guess when that demonic attack was in his bed that left blood on the sheets? I know. Make that up. And you Google it, you'll find it. It's all over. I can't believe it's still up, but it's still there. I looked a little while ago. It's still there. Google it. Tucker Carlson attacked by demon, and you'll see it from his own mouth. You'll hear it. It's real. If you want to talk about it more, I'd be honored. Because this is not an uncommon phenomenon, by the way, encounters like this. Okay. So... Praise the Lord. Look at who the Lord is bringing in out of darkness into the light so his voice and his truth can be spoke. Because Tucker is bringing a lot of reality to it. But don't get caught in that place. Well, I heard him swear. All right, that church lady needs to go back to 1988 and stay in Saturday Night Live. And I'm not saying he should speak the way he speaks. 
That's, I, I'm not judging him for any of that. But what I am saying is, he encountered our king. And, and it's changed his life, every part of it. And that's a testimony to Jesus, just right there. Pastor Craig, not talk about testimonies? The power of the testimony? Revisiting that old well? So good. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So, a news story broke last night about Chicago. About a, a yeah, Chicago. The Chicago mayor, quote, I propose a massive tax increase on spirits. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Go look it up. So if that dude understands what a spirit is, why do we struggle? I'm asking. In kind of a really nice, gentle, loving way. If our political system understands what a spirit is, why don't we? Now, he's speaking to spirits in a bottle, both hard liquor and beer. His, he put it, let's see. The mayor wants to increase the wholesale transaction per gallon of beer by 34% and 35 for other spirits, end quote. He knows their spirits. How come we don't know we're in a spiritual battle in the way that we need to? Why is that? Go ahead and uncork it. It's a spirit in a bottle. It was called that for hundreds of years. It's just now you started calling it whiskey or rum or tequila or, 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 or. It's a spirit. And you lower, oh boy. What if I don't want to? So you lower your guard a minute. And now, are you not more malleable? I know I would be. I'm more malleable. I'm not on guard. Okay. We're watchmen on the wall. Watchmen on the wall can't be drunks. They can't be buzzed. Oh, it's only a drink. Okay, let me watch you teeter for a little while. There you go. Boof, Humpty Dumpty. Okay. I really didn't intend to, to go there. <clears throat> So what we're going to talk about today is the three-legged journey we're on. Wasn't this really awesome? Our brother Steve made this for me after I used one that he made for the coffee urn out there a couple years ago and broke it <laughs> right here. Tried to do a little thing. So he made me this beautiful little stool, and it's called the milk stool, and I haven't ever milked on it, but... Man, is it stable, right? This three-legged journey we're on is all very changeable by you and by your behavior. Amen. This is so good. It really blesses me. So I'm not even going to try and break it, but can, can any of you imagine me sitting right now on this thing? It won't hold itself up. In fact, I don't think I could balance it. So if our three part, we're a three-part being, yes? yes? Body, spirit, soul. If you don't have that book and you've not gone through that teaching, I'll add that to Pastor Craig's list today that is foundational understanding of why I'm talking about what I'm talking about you're a spirit being first and foremost Amen. and you have a soul and you have a body you're carried around by this beautiful wonderful creation that I repented in this very stadium or this very <laughs> sanctuary thank you S word sanctuary Thank you, Mary. Years ago, and Pastor Steve didn't know why I needed to repent, because the week before I'd called this a stupid dirt vessel. And whoo, did I get rebuked from the Lord. And it was awesome. I learned. It's a be I'm beautifully and wonderfully created. That's what the word says. Bob was kind of frustrated with his flesh. 
So I called it a stupid dirt vessel. Dirt, humus, human. Some of you will get it later, maybe. So of these three components, what are the main three components of our journey in Christ? OK? Intimacy with God, the word, doing the word. OK. So if I lived just in intimacy, and all I did was stay in my prayer closet and put my talik around my face or hide my head, how am I going to do on this journey? I'm going to get tossed to and fro. I'm going to fall on my face. And that's OK, because you all know that I've taught you the most number one position talked about in praise and worship in the scriptures throughout is on your face. OK. So I'm, I'm OK with that. But it's not a very stable platform for me to be on. Right? OK. So. Intimacy. Intimacy. It's how we hear from the Lord. It's how I know that I know. It's how I knew that the Lord didn't like what I said about my beautifully and wonderfully created body, and I, re I misrepresented it as a stupid dirt vessel. How could I know he said that? Because I was listening. I was paying attention. By shutting up. Stopping my vain imagination from ripping all the time. Oh boy. Okay. So the second little pillar would be being in the Word of God. And I put that in this position in the front of the stool because they're equally important, yet one's got to be out in front to me. And I love my intimacy with the Lord. I, I, I truly enjoy this constant communion with my father, and I wouldn't have it without the word. OK. So I'm going to try and sit on this. Nope, I'm not. Because one of these two is going to break. And there I am on my face. Again, a beautiful place to be for a minute or five, or an hour, but not a place to live. And how can I do the Great Commission if I'm stuck on my face? Because see, regardless of what happens in our country, or on the planet, or in Stevenson County, Joe Davies County, right where we are, regardless, I don't give a rip. Of course I want the best for all of us. I love our country. I like our area. I love all of you. But if everything went south in a heartbeat, Jesus is still king. We're not going to freak out. We've done the word in our life, and we are prepared. Pastor Craig, again in my word. We're told to prepare. We're prepared, and we're preparing. And Jesus is king, and we'll still do what the Lord has us do, which is... Pray. Okay, awesome. Be in intimacy with the Lord. Be in the Word. But we'll be doing His Word in ourselves and others. We'll be preaching the gospel. We'll be setting captives free. We'll be putting people into liberty. We'll be raising the dead. We'll be bringing the dead into Christ. We'll be casting out devils and we'll be healing the sick. Because that's what we're told to do. Regardless of what goes on in this area, in our country, or across the, across the planet... That's what we live to do. So we'll do that. So then we're on to doing. Because in Bobby's world, doing is the third leg on this, on this journey. The word tells us to do it. Do the word in yourself first and foremost. Allow the word of God to do what God intended it to do, to carry the power, the transformational power that it carries in yourself. Because then 
you can bring it to others. Knowledge will get you nowhere. Pastor Craig again. He had revelation in Guatemala. If you don't know that testimony, I will say you need to sit with that brother and get that testimony. He killed him. The Lord killed him down there and brought him into revelation knowledge of grace, mercy, and love so that he could go teach and preach grace, mercy, and love, which is the new covenant, the simple gospel message without the intellect. I like reading scholars. I like reading early church fathers. Boy, it's a fine line, though, and it's a sharp balance whether you're sucked into the tree of knowledge and you're parroting what you just learned to look good or you're walking in power and authority of Jesus Christ and you're raising the dead and casting out demons and healing the sick. Because bringing people into the fullness of who they were created to be is what this is all about. So, back to that. Now I can sit on it because I've got the word, I've got intimacy, and I'm doing the word. My journey is solid as a rock. Now I have the wind try and blow me around. Tossed about to and fro is the way Jesus put it. Right. right. Does that mean I don't have a flesh flash? Nope. Nope. And is it less than it was? <clears throat> Amen. I don't know what works for everybody else, but I'm a really visual person. And I think I've, I, I, I've tried to share that over the years here in that even when the Lord shows me something, it's typically cartoon because it makes me giggle and laugh a lot and yet still keeps me in awe because it's him. And... I would encourage you to visualize that as you think about your own journey moving forward after this morning. Envision your journey. Am I propped up on all sides? Where am I missing it? Gosh. I, I know I shared, I think it was two weeks ago, when I, when I was speaking to relational prosperity, with relational prosperity, that's really, okay. Okay. Because if that relational prosperity is not right, this relational prosperity can't right, this one can't be right, this one can't... Get it? Okay. So, I strive to be intimate with my Lord so I can be intimate with my bride. I can be intimate with all of you. And I hear all the time... When I ask somebody that's struggling in some way, shape, or form, what was the Lord telling you this morning? Where were you at in the Word this morning? Well, you know, it's been really busy. And you know, you see, Bob, I've been... Oh, I got it. You're not in the Word. Do, 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 do we need a prop? Okay, so Word's gone. And you're concerned that you keep falling on your face. doesn't work it doesn't work the word tells us it doesn't work we tell each other it doesn't work okay I want to drill this in because as we grow deeper with each other are we growing deeper with each other as a family yes. okay hold each other accountable on just one thing forget about everything else Start by holding each other accountable in the word and where you're at in the word. That will make not only your own journey deeper, because maybe or maybe not, it'll help remind you to be in the word more. But, but edify and ask, where have you, you been in the word? What's the Lord saying to you in the word? What's, get it? It's really simple. And it will convict you if you're not in the word. So, it's a double-edged sword, like the word is. I think my brother Chris said that to me in a conversation this morning. That double-edged sword. It is.
Proverbs 22, 4. The rewards of humility and the fear of the Lord are wealth and honor for life. Humility, modesty, gentleness, meekness, fear, reverence. Not knees knocking, I'm afraid that snake's going to bite me. I'm afraid of those bees. Nope. Reverence and honor. I revere my Lord for who he is and what, what he's done in my life and what he's doing in our lives. And I can testify till the cows come home and I happen to have a stool to sit on while I'm waiting for them. Because it's your testimonies, it's not just mine. It's not just ours, it's yours. You need to have a pocket full of testimonies and revisit those wells and be able to go to, well, we'll just use Thanksgiving again, and be able to go to Thanksgiving and have somebody go, oh, whew, with what's going on in this country right now, I'm so anxious. Well, let me tell you about my king. I'll pray for you now and you'll be out of anxiousness right now, just like that, and release it and watch. I know, I know that I know that I know that I know. So, just another little coincidence, I'm sure. Did anybody watch 2,000 Mules when that came out? Okay, so you're familiar with who Greg Phillips is. This morning, I get an update from my true social feed, you know, that just like automatically pops across the front of my phone. And there's a post by Greg Phillips. This was, the uh, worship practice was still going on, so whatever, 8.30. Greg Phillips posts Proverbs 22.4 as the verse of the day. The rewards of humility and the fear of the Lord are wealth and honor and life. Why do I even bring that up? Because you can't make it up. This is the Lord, and it's so good, because we need this in this moment, y'all. Beloved, we need this in this moment, every bit of this. There is some depth to this that's so good. We are the wealthiest, healthiest, and most influential body in the region. That was spoke over this body before I was released here. But I stand on it because my spirit stands with it. If you can receive that, you can have it. Do you remember when that was, Miss Sharon? Right at the beginning. Okay. Again, that whole super spiritual thing, but it's, it feels right to me. So as I've prayed about that over the years, and I've never done this, so I'm just going to take a flyer. I'm going to define that in Bobby's world. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Wealthiest. How on earth are we the wealthiest? Is there a billionaire in the house? Amen, brother. Okay. In your bank accounts, is there a billion dollars in assets at this moment? Is there anybody worth 10 million? I'll stop right there. I know, because I know some of you just went, wait. No. Okay. So we could say we're probably not the wealthiest congregation meeting, even at this hour, 1120 on Sunday morning, because there are some congregations that locally have 20, 30 farmers in them worth 20, 30 million a piece. I, I, I know a bunch of those farmers and I know their values. So that's probably a pretty easy thing to say. So how could we be the wealthiest? Well, how about... Stop taking a worldly assumption to wealth. Huh. Yeah, actually, the way, the, the way I wanted to say it, so I'm going to say it, get your mind out of the gutter. My daddy owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't need to go to Zach and have a discussion about who has the most. My daddy's got it all. He could talk to me about his daddy till he's blue in the face. He ain't going to beat my daddy. I know, I just went back like a whole bunch of years when we were little kids. My daddy's bigger than yours. My daddy's got more tools than your daddy. Zach could say that. And I'd say, okay, fine, he does. I've seen his tools. Are you getting this? 
Wealth is not money all the time. Okay? There was a reason that it was the lowest and the last on the prosperity list. We have the opportunity to receive truths and revelations never most people don't get the opportunity to have. I know, if you don't believe me, I would encourage you to go sit somewhere else for a few times. Can I get a witness? I, I hear about your vacations and how we sat in a church. I hear, I hear about these other bodies. I'm not beating them up, I'm just saying. There's a reason you're not there and you were called here. A place called home, Miss Donna said so eloquently. We are wealthy beyond imagination by the freedom we have, by the family we have, by the liberty we walk in, and by the truths that are released from here for us to walk in everything God has us to walk in. We get to make them our own. You can pick and choose. When I'm telling you you should be walking in relational prosperity because that's where the Lord's got me, you don't have to grab it. Go home and stay in your box all by yourself. Don't be involved with anybody. But don't whine when you don't have anybody to help you do the thing and the stuff. Or when nobody cares about you when you're getting kicked to the curb. Yeah. And you can whine all you want. So, anyway. We have the opportunity here to do things and walk in favor of blessings of the Lord that many never get to receive because they don't hear these truths. And we do walk in financial prosperity here. I know the stories. And that one, I got released, and we're going to share it soon. Watch. And, and I just heard about debt reduction this morning. And we'll hear it a little bit more in a minute, maybe. So we are walking in financial prosperity, but when you hear this, we're the wealthiest, healthiest, most influential in the region, don't get hung up on the money thing. Okay, good. We're the healthiest. Whoo, boy. We're not there yet, walking in divine health as a family, but are we much closer than we were last year at this time? Yes. How about 10 years ago? Yes. I know. Just the testimonies here on health are incredible. And like Pastor Craig said, we saw, if you didn't see that portion, you should have been in the building to hear just how much he read my notes. And nope, my laptop wasn't up here. It was funny, and then it got to be a little challenging. But I, <laughs> but I trust the Holy Spirit and what he's got. So that's what I'm rolling with. We see miracles and signs and wonders constantly in this family. And over the years, I've had people say, well, I don't see them. How come I was there Sunday and I didn't see that? I don't know what you were doing. Maybe you were in the back talking about the bears. Sorry. Maybe you had your phone out and you were playing Candy Crush. But how you could walk out of this building and not get a testimony or not witness something happening that's supernatural, I have a hard time understanding. Because it can't just be from my vantage point that I see it or hear it. Right. <sighs> oh, boy. Most influential. Can we go back to Thanksgiving? Y'all, you guys... And, and, and it may make some of your heads tip sideways, even this comment again. You're a spirit being. Yeah. You don't even have to move your lips and you're leaking Jesus if you're in the spirit sitting at that counter Amen. having Thanksgiving. Amen. Watch. <sighs> yep. Do you know that most believers, well, I, I'll bet we'd struggle to find another believer in Lena that actually had that revelation. Uh-huh. So how does that make us seem as a body then? Pretty influential, because we know our power and authority. If you don't know it, you can't utilize it. Just like if you don't know it, you can't be judged by it. Yep. 
If you know you got it, now you can use it intentionally. And then sometimes use your words and watch what happens. Because when you couple your verbiage with your spirit that's one with Christ, because we live in Christ seated at the right hand of the Father, we didn't just nicely accept Jesus in our heart. We gave him the whole structure, and we now live in him. Bar the door, Katie. We're the most, we are the scariest things on the planet to the enemy. Now go to Thanksgiving. Demons flee. And they lash out. Our brother had a few lash out last night at him. Ha <laughs> ha, it makes me laugh all the time. Nobody gets hurt. Whatever. They're uncomfortable around us. Why? Because we're alive in Christ. In Christ. And we make people uncomfortable that aren't alive in Christ. Okay. Okay. Ephesians 1.16, I, I, I know I've shared before, but I'm going to go back to this well. I'm going to testify to the way the Lord used the word to bury it in me to change my life forever and to give me intestinal fortitude that's unstoppable by the demonic realm. And most of the time by humans. Because I know that 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 I know. Beat me on that. I prayed this prayer. So in, in this letter, Paul is saying, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Right? Yeah? Okay, so Paul's writing to the church in Ephesia saying, I've not stopped giving thanks for you. Huh. So he kind of lived in a place of prayer and thanksgiving all the time. Okay, good. And what did he pray? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father may give unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in your knowledge of him. So I heard this sister, Billy Brynn, talk about a, 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 a teaching by Brother Hagee, sidebar, if you don't cross-contaminate and listen to some of these great men and women of God of old, I think you're missing it. And you should be able to chew the meat and spit out the bones. There's no babes in Christ in this room. And if you don't know if it's okay to listen to Susie Q, ask. Ask at your grace group. Ask me. Ask Pastor Steve. Ask Pastor Craig. Ask. Okay, good. There's some really weird faces right there, but we're just going to go on. I changed this into a prayer. I changed the word into a prayer. The word's truth, but I changed it to me. Because, see, I walked in a lot of fear and anxiety and trepidation. What if? What if? Yup. And it, it may be a surprise, but as much context as I studied about the world at large and the 13 families that run the world and the elite and the global elite, and I knew a lot about the military and a lot about the non-military guys and all the covert up. Oh boy, it may or may not get a guy spun up when the enemy can blow on it. So I changed this into a prayer for myself because I actually believed, I believed I had hope God would take away that fear. Lord, your word said. And I, he led me here through a teaching from this woman. 
So I changed this to me, and I encourage you to do it. Father, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give unto me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in my knowledge of him. I ask that the eyes of my heart be enlightened so that I might know the hope of his calling, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Whole life prosperity is the inheritance in the saints, by the way. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll save that for another day, maybe. And the surpassing greatness of his power to me who believes, these are in accordance with the work, working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly realms, far above all authority, power, and dominion. So I don't have to worry about any of the earthly crap. Stop. Oh, boy. That's just, I'm, I repent. Earthly stuff. Far above. And guess who else I'm far above? The powers and principalities of the air. All the little minions. I don't have to be in a place where I've been battling for three days. I'm wrung out. I've been fighting a principality. Oh, praise Jesus. No. It's either done or it's not. I know that I know that I know it's done because I'm in Christ over here, seated at the right hand of the Father. None of that can happen there. None of it happens there. Okay, I'll keep and above every name that is named, not only in the present age, but also that one to come. Catch it? Because you can't say, well, that was yesterday. That was when Paul was. That's, you know, that stopped in 1834. Didn't you see the memo? Nope. Because we live in what age? The one to come. The one to come. Based on when this was written, we live on in the one to come. Okay. And God put everything under his feet and made him head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. I'm filled. Y'all filled? Yeah. You feel filled? Yeah. Do you know you're filled? Yeah. Do you want to be filled more? Today's a perfect day to do it. When we're done... There'll be people at the altar that would love to lay hands on you and be blessed to lay hands on you and fill you more or stir it up. Stir up the gifts that lay in you. One day you will know. I'm sorry. I'm making it up. That was a BLT. And God put everything under his feet and made him head over everything for the church, which in his body, the fullness of him, who fills, past tense, all in all. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you are in, and you are in, and I am in you. He's in me and I'm in him. As long as I can keep that one part of my three-part being in line. The flesh flash. As long as I can stop my emotions from controlling me. I can walk in that place. That simply. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to you, but his heart is not with you. For he, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. You know, we say that a lot. And we say that a lot. You want to show me your checkbook? I'll show you where your heart is. It's not a bad thing. I'll help you with your finances. I'll, I'll help you line your finances up with what the Lord wants you to have. And you'll be blessed by it. And I won't throw darts at you for where you spend your money. 
but it will scream for where, what you've got on that place in your heart that Cindy spoke to. Another coincidence. It'll scream of what that idol is in your life. Jesus needs to be there, that spot. Time, money, it all is about Jesus. Romans 2.11, for there's no respect of persons with God. What does that mean? That means that there's nobody in this room that I can't have exactly what you got. There's nobody that graces this platform that I can't have what he's got. Because Jesus don't respect anybody in that way. That was some of the finest grammar I've used in a long time. Our king's no respecter of persons. What's part of the person? Oh, boy. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. That was a setup, Lord. What's part of a person? The tree of knowledge. Intellect. So, not spirit. Is it spirit? Okay. For there is no respect of persons with God. He said it, not me. Should we go to like, flip through some other translations? Uh-huh. For there is no respect of persons with God. Try another one. It's got to be someplace different. For there's no partiality with God. Oh, that means that no matter what I do, he still loves me just as much as he loves Allie Mae. Amen. James. Aaron, for God does not show favoritism. Wait a minute, though, but I just did this for 30 years to get his good graces. Get it? He killed that in our Pastor Craig in the jungles. Ask him, did I encourage you to ask him about it? Okay, that's twice. Okay, good. Ha. Huh. And this is exactly why I can't say I'm God's favorite. In as much as I think it's hilarious, and I put a lot of people on tilt saying that over the, li over the years, I'm his favorite. He carries my picture around in his billfold. I can't. But I really want to still. And you should too. Because he's no respecter of per He loves me just as much as he loves every one of you. Right where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, well, there's the setup. Now we can do this. Praise Jesus. Can I have a drink of coffee in the meantime? Joshua 1 8, please. That was the setup after the setup. After the setup, because it really ran right through worship. The words that were released through Pastor Craig, and there's the setup. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. We could camp there a long time. Meditate on it day and night. Ruminate on it. Focus on it. So, when I get the word in me, and yep, it takes a minute. I don't read really fast. Okay. And it's in me, and I'm standing firmly doing the word in myself, in, in intimacy with the Lord, and I'm putting the word in me, now I start going about my day ruminating on the word. Amen. I've let the word wash over me. Amen. When we sit here, we allow the word to wash over us. That's why we're so purposeful here about speaking from the word. 
And knowing what the word is, in the Greek, in the Hebrew, we're blessed to be able to do this. Can, 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 can we go back to the healthiest, wealthiest again? We're blessed to be able to not just do flybys on Greek, but actually dive deep from an exegesis standpoint of the word of God and keeping it in context. Because if we don't keep it in context, we're DOA. Now we're in tree knowledge land. I may or may not have told a couple of brothers over the years, don't quote the word to me anymore. I know you know it from Genesis 1, 1 to the end of Revelation and can just spit it right out, but I don't see any fruit. Your life is a hot mess. And I do mean that. I got to call it like I see it. You can quote the Bible verbatim and your life's a hot mess and you got no fruit. What's the problem here? They're standing on one leg. Do, 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 do I want to know the word? Yeah, I eat the word. I speak the word. In our family, we talk the word. We talk about the revelation from the word. We talk about the nuances of the word. We share the word and the concepts of the word to enrich people's lives. Meditate on it day and night. I don't understand. I'm kind of busy. Remember where I was a little while ago? Hey, will you pray with me about this? Because my life's a mess right now. Okay, what's going on? So where were you in the Word this morning? Can, 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 can we go back there a minute? Okay. What happens if we'll do that? Then we will prosper and succeed in all you do. Can we go back to the healthiest and wealthiest and most influential? That's prosperity. That's prosperity. Yeah. If you don't have one of those prosperity sheets, I encourage you to take one. If yours is tattered, get another one. We'll print more. Plant the word in your heart and seek the kingdom of God first. Those are two biblical principles that will alter your life. Dramatically. We are taught scripturally to be fruit examiners, right? Okay. We're taught to judge. Yes? Okay, that's a fruit examiner. We're taught to judge. Okay. And it's important we realize we're taught how to do it correctly. Matthew 7, 16. By their fruit, you'll recognize them. Remember when I said I've been with a couple different brothers that could quote King Jameth front to back and had no fruit? Okay, good. By their fruit, you'll recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes? Or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Are you a good tree or a bad tree? Amen. Amen. We're growing into better trees. That, that, you know what? Yes. Right. Because the gardener, Jesus, will tend the soil in your heart and he will prune the bad off of you if you're in the word and if, and if. Are you catching all these ifs? And if you allow it. And if you're walking in relationship with brothers and sisters... You should be giving them permission. There should be a relationship that allows you to go, bro, I love you, and there's a pineapple hanging off your plum branch.
But we want to do this in love. We want to do it in a way that edifies Jesus, that builds our brother and sister up, not with a finger. In the world, what happens when you point a finger? Ah, there's three fingers pointing back at you. Yeah, it's truth. You, there, I got it now. It's counterproductive to our king, and it's not how he taught us. He didn't teach us that way. But he did teach us to be examiners of each other's fruits, to be able to encourage, exhort, walk alongside of, speak truth into. How many times has the truth made you free in an area? In an area that was producing bad fruit a minute ago? Yeah, right. Okay, good. Matthew 7, 3. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but fail to notice the beam in your own? Can we go over to the doing the word in yourself and others? Okay. Ooh, boy, that's a lot of threads. This, doing the word, first here. First here, then there. Because if I don't do it here first, I'm going to be ineffective, and I'm going to have bad fruit. There's going to be bad fruit. And it's going to show and be glaringly obvious to those that have permission to look at you and say, eh. spoiler alert, there's a pineapple grown off that apple branch on your left, and you can't see it because it's out of your eyesight. We can only see so far behind us. Last night we were listening to Dr. The woman, Tom, that handles all the animals and is world-renowned for handling animals through confinements and whatnot. Dr. Yes. Temple Grant, yeah. Awesome. And she was speaking to the way the pupils are in our eyes versus cattle and why they can see everything except, can you imagine seeing all the way back here? This is it, right there is about their spot they can't see. I don't know if I want to do that or not. That's an interesting concept. But we can't see, we can, only, we can see less than half of ourselves. So why is it a struggle to let a brother or sister that sees something that's bad fruit in you from pointing it out? Why, why do we pick up a fence? Why do we get irritated and want to hang up the phone? I'm not texting back to that. You know what he just said? You know what she just said? You know what they just said? Gosh, we're missing it. Okay, Whew. why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but fail to notice the beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye while there's still a beam in your own? You hypocrite. Take the beam out of your own eye and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Praise God, that's the definition of grace. Think about it. How's that grace? Because even though I got a honking four by four sticking out here and I want to help Scott get that chunk of wood out of his eye that came off the saw yesterday when we were doing wood, that little piece in there, all I got to do is get rid of this and now I can go help him. That's how good my God is and how much he loves me. How about you? Does he love you that much? Can you do the word in yourself like that and then be free to do the word in a brother or sister that way? That's grace. So I can't not look at the definition of hypocrite a minute because that's a pretty big deal. And that word gets tossed around a lot. And I believe it gets tossed around a wrong way a lot. Boy, it got quiet in here. Hypocrite from the Webster's, 1828. One who purports to be what he's not.
stolen valor comes to mind immediately, which irritates the fire out of me every time I see somebody purporting to be something they're not in a military uniform. How dare you? Okay, so he'd be a hypocrite, yeah? Okay. One who has a form of godliness without, without power, without power, without power. Can we go back to, to, to that word that's over this house right here? We're the wealthiest, healthiest, most influential. Do you realize that the power and authority that's utilized and tossed about in a kingdom way by us you'll drive a long way to find another body that has that kind of power in it. Why? Because we're not hypocrites. God won't work through a hypocrite, would he? I'm asking. Or one who assumes an appearance of piety and virtue when he is destitute of true religion. True religion is relationship with Jesus. He said it, not me. True relationship with Jesus is what this is all about. Everything else flows from there. Okay, so I want to finish up in worship. And I don't mean Pastor Ryan and the worshipers. Pastor Craig told us that worship was actually the testimony as well, yes? Okay, three of you remember. Pastor Craig told us all about worship being the testimony because we're going back to that well. We're worshiping our king. We're saying do it again. Yes? Okay. So I want you today to walk away with burying the word in you in a way you've never done it before. This hour that's upon us, we need the word. We need the word. Because the truth will make you free. And you can't help anybody else that's coming in masses if you don't have the word buried in your heart. And you're not walking in power and authority. Okay. So there's a couple people I tapped for a quick testimony of what the word did in their life. Mark, will you come here, please? When Mark and Sandy appeared in our... I don't need both microphones. When Mark and Sandy first came to our family, they sat right here every week. Yeah. And, and I never got an opportunity to meet them and really talk with them till about, I think they'd been here two years. And Mark was at my house at that time. And we were sitting having coffee, and he started sharing some stuff with me about what happened to him in that time frame that just made me cry. It was so beautiful. Brother, thank you. About 2017 or 18, I had a stroke. It was a couple years before I came here. I couldn't speak at all. I couldn't read. If I tried to talk, I might get, if I'm lucky, one word, and then everything would just drop. I couldn't remember. I knew what to say, but I couldn't actually put it in words. And uh, I was having a kind of a rough time of it, but I didn't give up on it, and I didn't just say I can't do nothing about it. So I got a Bible out, opened it up, and I dropped it. Just put it on its edge and dropped it. No, read a verse, or tried to. And I did this several times before I read one that kind of hit with me that said something on the order of uh, that uh, the more you get into the word, the more you're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, the more you're going to understand it. And the more you read it, the better you'll get at it. And it's going to make a lot more sense to you. To me, this brought a uh, thought that if I could read the word, I could start to speak again. So I started uh, reading the Bible. I just started at the beginning. 
At first, it was pretty difficult. I'd be lucky if I got two, letter, two words out of it before I'd forget what I just said or what I just read. And uh, I just kept rereading it over and over. It probably took me <laughs> at least a week to read one paragraph when I first started. I did this for a couple years. Even after I came here, I was doing it. I didn't talk hardly to anybody. I'd say maybe a word or two, and that was it, because I just couldn't talk. <clears throat> I kept this up for quite a while. And the more I read it, you know, I just started getting better at it. I still have problems. Once in a while, I get a flashback on it. but. Uh, the word is what got me back to this. Amen. And uh, Amen. I'm pretty thankful for it. Amen. Yeah, don't hold. Go, yeah, go ahead. Don't hold back. Uh, honestly, that's a miracle. You just heard the testimony of a man that couldn't speak, couldn't read a sentence and remember the first word by the time he got to the fifth word, and the word healed him. Ha, it's a really big deal. Gosh, you're so good, Lord. Alex, doo, 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 doo. will you please come and share? When did you, I, I know I said I'd ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> to watch you on your journey in the last year and a half, two, Two, almost two, years. almost two years, has been really fun. Because I know you were involved in this house a long time ago as a school student. Yeah. And, and the word was planted in you then. And the word says it will never return void if it's planted. Amen. Which is why we need the word. Okay, so tell me about, since you came back, tell us about, not me, tell us about what life has been like since you came back and began to be in the word yourself more? That would just take so long. <laughs> um, so like a quick overview. Just like I was so void of good relationships, um, anything positive in my life. Things were really, really hard mentally and emotionally all the time. Um, and since I've been back, that's just all gone. Like, I have so much support. Um, I got in the word. I Things that, like, stick with me, guarding my heart, being able to protect my kids and myself from this world, um, <laughs> and being grateful. I was so void of gratitude <laughs> before I came back here. Um, and since I started doing all of that, I went from being scared of people in my life and being very, um, not living in poverty, but I mean, I was, things were really hard financially <laughs> for me. And the Lord gave me relationships. He gave me people to protect my kids and watch my kids so I could work. Um, he gave me a job that I actually love and enjoy going to. And when that job got really hard, he was like, here's a $5,000 raise. This is where you're supposed to be at. And I was like, Come okay. On, Jesus. So I stayed. I, I wanted to quit. It's a hard job. Um, I case manage troubled youth, and it's not easy. Uh, but, yeah. And so after that, it, was, it wasn't a raise. It was a retention bonus. But um, I was like, okay, I'll stay here. And then we got actual raises in September and I'm making substantially more than I ever have in my life. Amen. Um, I can pay my bills, and I have some money left over. Like, I've, that's never happened in my life. So, and I don't think that's a coincidence of me. Like, I used to stand up here and listen to people like me right now and get so mad. I would sit in that seat and be like... All right, so what are you going <laughs> to tell the person right now that's getting irritated even now? Exactly. Well, the... It doesn't, I knew I, you had to humble yourself. I had to humble myself. It does not happen overnight. It is a process. <clears throat> it is about building relationships. Um, it is about allowing people to help you 
you are allowed to rely on others. You're allowed to rely on God, and he will come through. Amen. So. That's awesome. And I know there's more. That was... That was... Re- <laughs> I know, Mitchell. I'm sorry, but it's in my hand. <laughs> that was really an invitation for y'all to learn the more. There's something there for you. Was there something there for you and Mark? Being in the Word? Uh, sitting right here and allowing the Word to wash over him? Because I, I'm glad he said it the way he said it. I remember that. And it'd be like, so did anybody talk to that guy and his wife that said she's a little shorter, kind of quick? No, man, they, they always like jettison so quick. Yeah, I didn't know it was because he couldn't carry on a conversation. And the word healed him. Nobody laid hands on him and prayed for him, which I love doing. And I've, had, I've seen tremendous miracles. But the word healed him. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so two completely separate testimonies to what the word can do, yes? Jess, brother, come on down, please. If you don't know this brother, you need to know this brother. You've got this. Thanks, Bob. (laughs) Uh, There may or may not be a little sarcasm there, but it's okay. Um, He loves me. So, some of you may not know me. I'm not here all the time, but... um, uh, it's, uh, that's a challenging circumstance that I have, but, um, I know where I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be here. I know for sure the Holy Spirit led me here. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that if anybody is wondering if they're in the right place, I can, I can speak that you are. But, you know, one of, one of the things that I can speak to, uh, as far as what the word has done for me is, you know, um, the peace that I have that uh, even though I have all these challenges, everybody has challenges, and they're not, they're not going to stop. But, you know, if you're having a problem with, uh, you know, you, if you don't have peace, you're exalting your problems above the Word of God. And... And when you exalt the word of God, you're going to have peace. And, um, you know, Pastor Craig mentioned um, 2 Peter 1 and 2. uh, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. Well, what I love about that is uh, most of Paul's epistles start out in the first, within the first paragraph, they all say, Grace and peace be to you. And then you get to 2 Peter and it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. And so, you know, the more you learn, the more you know God, the more peace you're going to have. And and then before I even knew this, um, I was was driving down the road. I I don't know. I, I came to the Lord about four and a half years ago. And it was about a year after that or something like that. I was, I was driving down the road and going between jobs. And I own my own business. My phone was ringing. I had a problem somewhere. You know, I had all these issues going on. And I was just driving down the road. And the peace that was, came over me was, it was amazing. It was awesome. And then, you know, I learned Luke 8.11 says, the seed is the word of God. And then you read the parable of the farmer, and he sows the seed, and he doesn't know how it happens, but it produces fruit. And uh, when you put all that together, if you're, uh, if you're lacking peace, get into the word of God, and uh, you will experience it because... <clears throat> 
the seed. The word of God does not fail. Amen. That's awesome, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what the word's done for this brother. From non-believer, and we'll use scripture, from a dead man, into who you just witnessed, testifying to Jesus, and I know there's, I know that I know there's a ton more there. In Bible college, year two, yeah? Yep, yep. year two at Karis. Doing the deal, leaking Jesus all over those people he's around, bringing the dead to life, and being transformed in himself by the word. It's really a blessing. <clears throat> so, I pray that you're encouraged to be in the word more, or some, and to ruminate and think about that word throughout the day. It's not about plowing through the word like you're reading the, the Bible in a year thing. And I'm all about that too. I'm not doing it this year. But I'm all about that too. But allow the Holy Spirit to bring you to a place, give you a scripture or five or 12 or one or whatever it is, and to ruminate on that for the day. Lord, show, ring it out. Ask him to show you, and he will, because he's faithful and he loves you and he cares about you. That's why he gave us his word to start with. Okay, if you'll stand, I will bless you. Please receive the blessing that the Father has for you. He calls you beloved, the ones that are greatly loved. And we, he and I both desire that you experience prosperity and his type of divine health. And the way this happens is by allowing your soul to prosper through intimacy with him and knowledge of his word. I love you and I'll see you again soon.